Greetings. It is our pleasure to present another set of back titration. Welcome to back titration set three. Because we realized that most of our students still get confused when dealing with this type of titration. So we give yet another example to show our learners what is supposed to be done when we talk about back titration. So in this set three, we are provided with one 4.69 grams of a carbonate MCO3 as solid Q. We then have two molar hydrochloric acid, that is solution P, and then we have sodium hydroxide solution R that contains 40 grams per liter of solution. So even before we get into our questions, it is good we understand the molarity of solution R from the information given here. So, sodium hydroxide usually has that formula, which means that uh, the relative formula mass is going to be 23 for sodium, added to 16 for oxygen, added to 1 for hydrogen. This gives us 40. So, if I have 40 grams per liter of sodium hydroxide, and its RFM is also 40, it means that molarity of my solution is going to be 1 molar. So, solution R is actually 1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. So, in this experiment, we are required to determine the relative atomic mass of metal M in the carbonate M. CO3. Now to procedure. Measure accurately 100 cubic centimeter of solution P. Remember from the information given, solution P was 2 molar hydrochloric acid. So we are supposed to only use 100 cubic centimeters of it. We put in a clean 250 cubic centimeter conical flask. Then we shall add all the 4.69 grams of solid Q. Solid Q was our M carbonate. After this, we are supposed to shake well and wait for effervescence to stop. At this point, all the solid Q will have been used up and we shall still have some excess HCl that we shall use in the titration. Actually, that is the meaning of back titration. One reagent, in simple terms, takes place, takes part, sorry, in two reactions. So proceeding, we are supposed to label the resulting solution as S. This solution S actually is the excess of HCl that did not react with our solid. So now this is what we shall use in titration against sodium hydroxide solution. If a student understands back titration from that perspective, it becomes quite easy to maneuver. So we then pipetted 25 cubic centimeter of solution R. Solution R is our one molar sodium hydroxide solution. So this we shall pipette into a conical flask. We then add phenolphthalein indicator and then we shall then fill our burette with our excess hydrochloric acid which we have explained is solution S. 
and then this we shall titrate against R until end point. So record your results in the table below and then we shall repeat the procedure two more times to be able to fill table one. And because this is a demonstration, we shall fill the table with values, appropriate values that a student is able to get in a real experimental setup. We need the summary of our solutions and I believe as we go through procedure, I've been able to give that. So we know what R is, we know what S is, we know Q and we also know P. So then let's proceed to the table. So here is our table and for purposes of demonstration, we shall fill the table together. Remember we did a video that took us a lot of time to explain on some tricks on how to maximize the score in filling the table. So for our case, I'll assume that the initial burette reading for my first experiment was 0.0, .0 .0 cubic centimeters. My final burette reading I'll assume is 19.9 .9 cubic centimeters to give me volume of solution as used as 19.9. .9. Now because I have not reached half the volume of the burette, I will start the initial at 19.9 .9 and let me assume that uh, my uh, final burette reading will reach 40.0 so that my volume of S used will be 20.1 cubic centimeters. Now having reached 40 for experiment 2, it means for my experiment 3, I have to top up my burette once again and therefore I'll start at 0, 0.0. So this assuming gives me 20.3 as the final burette reading, the volume of solution as used will be 20.3. Now candidates, we insist on this kind of values as you do all your experiments and we explained in a video whose link I want you to check out in the description to this particular video. We explained that as you do your experiments, please make sure the first two titrations give you the first set of values that can be averaged and then experiment two and three should also give you a second set of values that you can average. The reason as to why we proposed this is well explained in the video whose link I promised I will post in the description. So you can always get back and remind yourself why we proposed this approach. So to the first question, average volume of S used. Here, a candidate is only supposed to pick one set. So for our case, I will pick 19.9 .9 for experiment 1, added to 20.1 .1 for experiment 2, and I divide by 2. Remember, if I use 20.3 to average, I'll not get any mark for principle of averaging, because the values that will be there will now not be within the range of plus or minus 0 0.2. So please, just pick one set out of the two for your answer in question one. So this gives me 20.0 as now my average volume of solution S that has been used. So I have a mark for showing the working and I have a mark for the final answer totaling one mark. Let's proceed to the rest of the questions now. So question two, we are asked to calculate moles of solution R used. Remember, solution R is one molar sodium 
hydroxide solution. So, if you could see our procedure, we pipetted only 25 of the same. So, to get the answer here, we shall argue out that one liter of our solution contains one mole of sodium hydroxide. How many moles then are we supposed to have if we picked only 25 of the same? So cross multiplication gives me 25 times 1 divided by 1000. And I get my answer as 0 0.025 moles. This is one mark, so a half for the working, a half for the final answer. Now to question 3. We are asked moles of hydrochloric acid. Solution S in the average volume used. So the information we have about S actually is not complete, but the information about sodium hydroxide is now fully complete. So for us to answer question 3, we need to be guided by the equation for the reaction that took place during titration. And during titration, we titrated sodium hydroxide against the excess HCl, and we are able to get sodium chloride and water. So using this equation, it's balanced. Mole ratio, you can see, is 1 is to 1. So it means moles of sodium hydroxide that were used are the same as moles of hydrochloric acid that were used. So this means, therefore, that moles of HCl used during titration are the same as those of sodium hydroxide, and therefore the answer remains 0.025 moles. A half a mark for this, and for the very first time we shall give a half for the equation, though ordinarily the equation is worth one mark. To question number four. Moles of hydrochloric acid, solution S in 100 cubic centimeters of solution. So, in our previous question, we have found moles of hydrochloric acid used to be 0 0.025. The volume we used here was the one that we calculated as our, our average volume in equation in question 1. And if you remember, we got it as 20. So, to answer this question, we need to argue out that if 20 cubic centimeters, which we used as our average volume for solution S, contained 0 0.025 moles. Now, in 100 cubic centimeters, how many moles are we going to have? So, cross multiplication gives 100 multiplied by 0 0.025, then we divide by 20. And the answer we get here is 0 0.125 moles. For one mark, a half for the working, a half for the final answer. Now, we move on to question number five. Moles of hydrochloric acid in the original solution P. Remember, solution P was two molar but we only picked a hundred of it to react with our MCO3. So this is a very easy question to get. In one liter of solution, we have two moles of hydrochloric acid, but we only used 100. So this one, if you do cross multiplication, you have a hundred multiplied by two divided by 1000, and we get 0 0.2 moles as those of P that were originally present in 100 cubic centimeters. So a half again for final answer, a half for the working. Now, the next question, moles of solution P 
that reacted with the carbonate. So here, it's all about understanding what goes on in a back titration experiment. We took 0.2 moles of P, we put in our M carbonate, and then during titration, we only used 0.125 moles. So it means the difference between these two moles is actually the number of moles of solution P that reacted with our carbonate. So the answer here is simply original minus the moles that were used during titration. So the answer here now becomes 0.075 moles. Again, a half a mark for the answer, a half for the subtraction. To number seven, moles of M carbonate that reacted. Here, we have to write the equation for the reaction between our carbonate and hydrochloric acid. And the way M carbonate is written here, we can easily know the valency of metal M. It is 2, so M chloride will be MCl2. And because it's a carbonate, we shall get carbon dioxide and water as well. Then we balance with the two carbonates here. So this equation shows that moles of carbonate to moles of hydrochloric acid, the ratio is 1 is to 2. So if moles of hydrochloric acid are 0 0.075, we shall simply divide by 2 to get moles of M carbonate. And this gives me 0 0.0375 moles. Let's finally look at the last question, which is asking us the relative formula mass of M carbonate. And from here, we shall then be able to get the relative atomic mass of metal M. Relative formula mass of our carbonate MCO3. So, the number of moles we've gotten is 0 0.0375. This one is the equivalent of 4.69 grams that we used initially. So, to get the relative formula mass, we need to get the mass of one mole. And this we get by multiplying one by 4.69, and then we divide by 0 0.0375. This gives us 125. Remember, relative formula mass should not have any unit. Finally, to get relative atomic mass of M, we shall equate M CO3 to 125. So M will now be 125. From it, I'll, sub I'll subtract 12 for carbon and 3 oxygens will be 48. So this is 125 minus 60 and the answer, the relative atomic mass of M becomes 65. For the hallmarks, so we shall give a half for the working there, a half for the answer, a half for the relation, and finally, a half for the RAM of M. Candidates, we've come to the end of that video where we are again reinforcing the understanding of back titration. Thanks for watching.